go. My iPad was arguing with me this morning, but I got it straight, okay? Well, this is a different kind of service for us. Normally we have a band, uh, but they weren't able to make it this morning. We didn't think we should. Um, and so there's music all throughout the service. But today, uh, we're going to have an abbreviated service unless I get to going too far, okay, or too long. Um, but again, I, I welcome you here. And one of the things it says up here is that we're, the law of tithing is what we're going to talk about. We're, we're going to talk about more than that. There is a woman by the name of Edwin Gaines. Now, Edwin Gaines is a unity minister, and she talks and has been talking for years about prosperity uh, for the whole world. She travels through the world. She's extremely well known and su extremely successful in her life. Um, Edwin's wrote a book called The Four Spiritual Powers, or sp Four Spiritual, yes, Powers, Laws of Trans. Of, uh, The Four Spiritual Laws of Prosperity. Thank you. We got it. Together we got it. And so anyway, uh, in this book, she really does talk about more than just tithing. But she breaks it down into four areas. First, she talks about tithing. We'll talk about that some of the day in a different way. Secondly, goal setting is a part of bringing a life of prosperity into being. Third is the ability to forgive. And the fourth is divine purpose. And so we'll be talking about these four areas uh, each week as we move through January. Edwin in her books, and she's a really comical person, okay? I mean, she's funny, to say the least, and, uh, and uh, uh, is very uh, authentic and very blunt and very straightforward. So she says in her book that, you know, we've got these four laws, and we might as well start with the one that chokes us the most, and that's tithing. Um, that that's like the frog we're supposed to take first. And so let's swallow the frog today, she says, and get that out of the way. So that's kind of what we're talking about today. We want to swallow the frog, if you would, of the idea of tithing. Now, there's a course we teach called the Four T's, I mentioned earlier, and that course talks and teaches us to say 200 times a day, I am prosperous. Now, that sounds like a lot, but it takes about two minutes, okay? <laughs> Three minutes. You say, I am prosperous, I am prosperous. I am. We can do that, but it does not normally bring about prosperity just by saying it. Because what's happening is we're saying something maybe we don't believe. And so that's why this course, particular course, takes us through these ideas of how to tithe of time, talent, and uh, uh, <clears throat> time, talent, and talent. Okay. Time, talent, and tithe, money, financial. I don't know where I am this morning, but anyway, it is in that, okay? Uh, anyway, so what happens is that as we... As we look at prosperity, there is a foundation, if you would, under prosperity uh, that must be a spiritual foundation that one must learn in order to truly be prosperous in our life. And, and Charles Fillmore, who was co-founder of Unity, said that prosperity is a consciousness of God, an infinite universal source, as the abundant, everywhere present resource, unfailing, ready for all who open themselves to it through faith. He says that when we understand, what he's saying is when we understand spiritual law, when we understand the various laws, and we'll go through a few in a, a few minutes, they become the foundation of the way we think, the way we act, the way we, what we become. And it's really important to understand that spirit within us, what we call in unity the Christ within, which is the same spirit that was in Jesus, the same spirit we believe it was in was in, uh, um Buddha, uh, the same spirit of all great religious leaders and other individuals who weren't considered to be religious leaders, there is a spirit within that guides us and directs us if we're willing to open to it. And so one of the things that's important in understanding the law of prosperity, of having what we call a prosperity consciousness, is that we have to be willing to understand how we can live within these universal laws. These are the laws that are much like Laws of science, mathematics. You know, one plus one equals two. It doesn't equal three, it doesn't equal eight, it equals two. And it has always, and always will. In the law of spiritual consciousness, what happens is that we begin to understand what God is. God is not a person. God is not a thing. God is not uh, a superhuman. But God instead is spirit. Jesus said that. 
that God is spirit. And what does that mean? That means that God is within all and is all as spirit. And so we have this concept of God as spirit. And when we do that, we start to learn that God is principle. There are certain principles that we can look to, certainly from the human perspective, of how God is literally uh, these principles. For example, God is love. We believe that, that God is unconditional love. And so if God is unconditional love, God cannot not love you, okay? It's impossible for anybody to have unconditional love. When I look at my children, I have unconditional love most of the time. And I hope I've always, I, now I hope I always have it. But what happens is and through the unconditional love, they can do anything they want to and I'm going to still love them. And I literally see them in their perfection. I see the potential within them. I've had teachers like that. I've had friends like that. And it makes a difference in one's life. And so what happens is, is that knowing that God is love, as I experience that, I then experience God in a personal way because I become loving. Does that make sense? So we're looking at this concept of God in a different way than we've been taught most of our lives. Again, God is not a man sitting up there on the throne. God does not have a beard. God does not have a dress. God doesn't have any of those things. God is God, and that's about the best definition I've ever had of God. God is, period. And uh, as we come to understand that, we start to understand these laws that have been put into uh, the universe to help us guide and direct and lead our lives in a way that we are joyous, we are at peace, we are excited about life itself. And what I want to do is take some of these spiritual laws and share them with you because I think it is the basis to prosperity thinking. Prosperity in health, prosperity in our lives with a sense of purpose, prosperity in uh, all that we do. So it's not just all about money. It's about life itself. It's much bigger than that. And so often when we think about the word prosperity, we think about the word money. And so today I just want to carry that away a little bit and tear away at that so that what we have to look at is that what are the spiritual laws that underline, that support my prosperity? But what is universal law? Well, it's got based again on God principles. When we say God is omnipresence, when we say God is omniscience, when we say God is uh, omnipotence, we are defining God as principle. Those are principles. They are not thoughts. They are not things that change. They are eternal in nature. And so what I like to use the word if as is God principle. God principle. What are some of the God principles, if you would, that we have to be in in order to live life more abundantly? And uh, so let's look at these different ones as soon as I can find them. Again, I hit the wrong button here. apologize. Uh, the first one is called the law of... Um, <coughs> It's called the law of cause and effect. Now, cause and effect means it's, there has to be, and, and what we way we put it in unity is just there, it's a, the first thing, everything has to have a thought behind it. And whatever we think about is what comes into our beingness. If I worry about something, then that appears. That's where I focus my attention. If I think positive thoughts, then those things appear in my life if I focus on them and pay attention to them. And so this is the law of cause and effect. And what happens is that when we follow these principles, that there are seven things we can depend on. With the law of cause and effect, I can depend on transformation by stepping into God's universe and the laws that govern. I can experience a growing personal relationship with the spirit within me, which we call the I am, or the higher self, uh, or the Christ within, as I said earlier, or the Buddha within, if you like that terminology, wherever you are. And then there's a vision that provides purpose and fulfillment that comes into our way of being. I'm not talking about going to, and it might happen that way, but I'm not talking about going to bed at night and having a dream or having a vision, okay? I'm talking about that we create within ourselves the ability to be visionary, that we create within ourselves the ability to dream, the ability to imagine positive things happening in our life. And then we say that the manifestation of dreams and desires by spiritually, we manifest our dreams and desires by spiritually managing our prosperity, our overall prosperity. And then we get guidance, and through that we end up having a real realization that all things begin with our thoughts. Whatever we focus on will appear. 
Again, this happens through the law of cause and effect. This means that um, the current financial quality of your life and my life is based on our belief systems regarding the economics of supply. I used to teach uh, financial planning. I used to be a financial planner. And, and one of the things I'd start my courses off with was uh, there are only so many dollars in the universe. And you better get yours while you can, OK? Well, that's not true. I thought it was at the time, but it's really not true. There are more than enough dollars in the universe. There are more dollars in the universe today than there were 100 years ago, our currency. There's more. So that's not a true statement. What we really start to understand from a spiritual perspective is there's more than enough energy, more than enough substance, more than enough of anything that I desire. And everything is there for me. And so we then step into the law of abundance. So we go from cause and effect, the law of cause and effect, to what we call a law of abundance. And again, we've been taught in economics the law of supply and demand, that there's only so much. And yet what we find is there's more and more and more, even though we think there's too much. And, and the law of supply and demand is controlled uh, in economic thinking by the cost of something. If you don't sell many of them, you drop the price. If you're overselling, you raise the price, okay? Because there's that demand there and that supply. The truth is, is that we can make as many widgets as we want to. That we can create as much money as we want to. That we can create our lives in such a way that it's not the money, but it's the energy in our lives that makes the difference. And so we have this law of abundance. And what it says is that I am thankful for everything that I have. And you may say, wait a minute, what do you mean thankful for everything? Are you telling me that I'm supposed to be thankful uh, when I'm unhealthy? And I would say, yes, because you have an opportunity to heal. Are you telling me that I should be unhappy when I don't have enough money in the bank? Yes, because you're grateful for what you have. And we get caught in a, into the idea of being grateful for what we don't, or not grateful for what we don't have, you see? And, and we focus on what we don't have rather than what we have. When we focus on what we have and don't define it as good or bad, what happens is we then step into this law of gratitude, this thought of being thankful for whatever is going on right now in my life and working to resolve some of the issues, maybe in a relationship. I'm unhappy with the relationship. I'm having problems in the relationship. If that happens, then what we have to do is not focus on the problem but focus on the solution of how we can show unconditional love to that person, how we can respect them. It doesn't mean that it's going to fix the relationship. But what it does mean is that if the relationship comes to an end, it comes to an end on much better and firmer grounds where there's mutual respect for the two people involved. Uh, and so then there is what we call the law of circulation. Now, the way I used to explain this is that there is a law of circulation. Law of circulation says there's a beginning and, a, and no ending. That it's just a circulation, a same circle. And that's true of energy. There is more than enough energy in the, in the universe. We know that. There's energy that's not even used. And yet, what we tend again to think is that um, there is, in the law of circulation, that we can give and not receive, or we can receive and not give. The truth is we have to give and receive both for the law of circulation to work. We have to give of our talent. We have to give of our thoughts. We have to give on our job. We have to do that kind of thing. And then we receive from that. If we interrupt that, then what happens is we stop the law of circulation. An example I would use is that if you go to a bank and you set up a savings account and you put $1,000 into that bank, how much money can they loan to people based on that $1,000? Well, some people would say, well, $1,000, of course. That's not true. And it changes from time to time because of the Federal Reserve. But if you put $1,000 in a bank, more often than not, that bank can loan $8,000 out. And it's backed by the Federal Reserve. That's the law of circulation. Then they loan $8,000 out, and that person who got the $8,000 puts more money into the bank through either payments or makes money off of it and puts more money in the bank. Then the bank has more than $1,000 and more ability to loan. That's the law of circulation actually working in our economic system. It can work within ourselves, too. 
that as we circulate our thoughts, as we circulate our money, as we circulate our talent, as we circulate our time, then we will be rewarded for that because we are giving and receiving, giving and receiving, giving and receiving. Then the next law that I would mention to you is uh, the law of giving. And this is one uh, where I don't follow the tradition, even in unity. Uh, I do believe that we all have to give. I believe that I have to give time and talent, and I have to give my treasure, my financial goods. I have to give financially. I don't think one can replace the other. I, I, I give my talent, but I don't give any uh, money, okay? I give my uh, time, but I don't use my talent. I just show up, so to speak, but I don't use any of my real core talent in giving of my time. Uh, that works against us. And so the way I look at it is that if a person gives in the community, and I'll use dollars as an example, gives to Red Cross, uh, as an example, of course, uh, gives to a homeless person, gives to somebody, and they're not attached to the gift. And what I mean by that, they give, but they don't wonder what happened to it. They just let it go. It's a gift, period. And if they gave whatever percent they give into the community, or they give it to this church, for example, it doesn't make any difference to God. God's not an accountant. God's not saying, well, you didn't give to unity this week, so I'm, gonna, I'm not going to let the law of prosperity work for you, okay? The law of prosperity is a universal law. So if I, I believe if one gives whatever they give, they will get a mighty return for it. If I give 10% of my time, I'm going to get a return from that in some kind of way for the time I've given, either by what I learn, either by what I receive, uh, whatever, I'm going to get a return for that. If I give 10% of my talent, give it away to another organization to support that organization who's trying to help people, then I'm going to return, I have a return of more than 10% of my talent. My talent's going to grow. You know, when you use something, it grows. And so my talent's going to grow. And then the next thing, for example, is uh, that if I uh, am willing uh, to give to my spiritual source, that that's an important one because it means I will grow spiritually. Giving is not a percentage that's important, I don't think. Now, Vicki and I give more than 10% of our income out, quite a bit more. That doesn't mean that we're going to receive any more than somebody who gives 2%, I don't think. It just means that that's what we want to do, and we feel like we want to do it, and, and, it, and it makes us, gives us joy and gives us a sense of being, and, uh, uh, and we appreciate the opportunity, we're grateful for the opportunity to be able to do that. But it doesn't matter where the gift goes. We will be blessed because we gave, as long as we're willing to receive. So this is law of giving. Through, I haven't read anything ever that says, receive and you shall give. Now, a lot of people follow that law. I used to. At the end of each month, when I was in the financial business, I figured out how much money I had left over, how much I wanted to put in savings, and then I said, oh, the church can have the balance that I go to. Now, that's not giving, okay? That's planning. <laughs> that's, that's okay, I, I know I'm giving it, but it's not because I trust God, because I trust the universe. It's because that's what I had left over. And I was fortunate enough to have that left over. What I do today is I give from the first dollar I receive. And that's what just about every major religion teaches, or faith teaches, religions teach it. And pretty much, uh, for example, the one thing that Ford, Edison, Rockefeller, Carnegie all had in common is they were tithers. They believed they should give 10% to their church. That's something they had in common. And I think they were rewarded pretty well because of that and that part of their beingness. So they, were, they lived in spiritual law many times. That's how they learned and how they grew and how they shared with people. And they received great income, but they also were willing to give it away as they received it. There's a joke I heard one time of a guy who went to his minister and said, how, how do I get more increase in income? The minister says, give, tithe, that'll do it. 
The fellow said, okay, fine. So he started to tithe. And at the time he started to tithe, he was making about $4,000 a month. Then he started to make $10,000 a month. Then he was making $20,000 a month. Then he was making $30,000 a month. He went back to the minister and said, what do I need to do so I don't have to give so much? I mean, I'm giving you guys, you know, $3,000 a month. And he said, uh, well, you can stop making much income as you do and go back to where you used to be and you can give less if you want to. The guy didn't think it was a good idea. Anyway, so the, the thought behind it is that I give no matter what I make and I give an allowance with what I feel like I can do. Here at Unity of Richmond, we talk about an idea called consistent giving, that we give consistently. When we have a day like today, uh, obviously we don't have as much in the way of uh, money coming in, love offerings, but we know that we have a number of people, a large number of people in this church who give consistently, either through credit card or they send checks in through their bank account or however they do it, they give very consistently. So when we have a day like today, an off day like today, we're not worried about uh, what's happening, okay? Uh, so that's what we really teach you is consistent giving. When we give consistently on a regular basis, it enriches our lives. It frees us up. It gives us joy. It gives us peace of mind. And we feel like we are trusting the universe. At least that's what happens for me. And so the idea is, is that as we give, as we follow these spiritual laws, that we are able to um, understand that we have the ability to create our own world which brings two laws I've put together, and then I'll close this up. The law of attraction and manifestation. That's what eventually comes. The law of attraction says that whatever I conceive in my mind, I can produce. That I have the ability to shape energy, if you would, and we do. That's where things come from. It comes from energy. So I have an ability to bring the energy, which is the invisible, into the visible. And when I do that, I am now bringing to myself all the good, that's in the universe. I believe everything I want is already here. I just can't see it sometimes because my thinking gets in the way of it, okay? And I have to open myself up and understand that. And then there's the law of manifestation, which means I manifest what I think about. It comes back to that idea of cause and effect. There is one thought. That thought creates an idea. That idea, if we focus on it long enough, comes into being in our lives. So if I want more good in my life, then I have to figure out how to think good things. If I want more spiritual growth in my life, I have to look for spiritual growth in certain ways. If I want more money in my life, I have to figure out what I need to do. Do I need a different education? Do I need a different job? Do I need to be led or guided by this thing we call spirit in order to bring about into our good all the good that's in the universe? And we can do that. But sometimes, like I said, we just can't see it because we're stuck. And that's because we're thinking the same thoughts every day, over and over again. And the more we do that, the more we stay stuck. And the way we get unstuck, if you would, if that's a proper word, is that we then turn around and we start to slow our thinking down. Which brings us into one of the most cru crucial thoughts and positive parts of unity and of the many, many religions in the world. And that's we stop, we get silent, we pray, and we meditate. That's how we create gaps in our thinking. And in the gaps come new ideas, so I can start to focus my thinking on those new ideas, which may be and probably are spiritual in nature. They may not look like it, but they truly are, because they come from within you. They become what you're thinking and what you desire. But we've got to get to those gaps, and that's through this power uh, to manifest, and that's through prayer and through meditation. So, as you engage these laws, the law of abundance, the law of uh, first cause, the law of gratitude, the law of circulation, the law of giving, and the attraction, and the law of manifestation, it begins to transform your life in a different way. I was fortunate enough to make a lot of money. I was fortunate enough to lose most all of it, okay? Now, that may sound crazy, and I didn't feel that way when I did. But what happened was, it, it took me a while, but I had to reevaluate where I was and what I was thinking. And as I started to understand it was coming within me, I had to look at what it was I was doing and why that happened. Why did I lose what I had spent 30 years creating? And it was because it was all built on a lack consciousness. I thought it was a 
if somebody had said a prosperity consciousness, I would have thought that, but it really was a lack consciousness. And in that lack consciousness, I was able to make some mistakes. I was able to make some decisions that were not in my highest good or the highest good for my family and lost pretty much everything that I had created. But during that period of recovery, if you want to call it that, and that's what I call it, um, I was able to, I happened to find unity, and I started to, and I had read many of these things, studied many of these things, especially during the early 70s, and they started to make sense from a spiritual standpoint. Before, I'd always studied them for a business standpoint. And that was the difference. I was coming from spirit, and it's changed my life, and, and today, thank God, I am very, very prosperous in so many, many ways, and blessed in so many ways. So, uh, by stepping into God's universe, we, again, coming back, we grow a personal relationship with spirit, which in unity we call the I am, the beingness of you, that which is within you. We are able then to start to create a vision that provides purpose and fulfillment in our life. We can manifest our dreams and our desires. We are guided from within rather than the advice that comes from without. Now, I get advice from other people, but I do it as I'm guided to do it rather than starting with them for advice to decide what I'm supposed to do. I've got to go with them myself first and get some idea of what it's going to be so I can be concrete, so I can be strong, so that I can see things uh, with, with, with vision. Then, the next thing is I'm able to balance in all my affairs, mental, physical, emotional, and spiritual prosperity. It's a big word. And the realization that all things begin with our thoughts and whatever we, appear, and whatever we focus on will appear is so beneficial to my prosperity, to your prosperity. So this morning, kind of long, but anyway, uh, I, what I want you to just understand each and every one of us, is that within each and every one of us, there is this thing we call spirit. It is God expressing through us. It is a God of spirit expressing through us. That's what we've been created to do. That's what we've been created to become, expressions of God. All those principles I talked about, love, wisdom, power, strength, these are all expressions of God, but we have to work at it. Sometimes we have to peel the onion back layer by layer so that we can grow and transform. But when we do, we become excited about life, we become excited about ourselves, and we become excited about the many things that we are capable to do to help others, to support others. So I thank you this morning for, first of all, being here, my goodness gracious, okay? And for those out there for tuning in, I... Um, I just want you to know that um, I know that I am loved by God and that love, and you are loved by God because God, as I said earlier, can't do anything else. And it's through that love that I start to feel for myself because of the love that flows through God that I have the courage to step forward and take some risk and do things that make sense for the change in not only my life but the lives of others and even change in the world. We're living in very chaotic times. Of course, it's been chaos throughout history, but we are living in a time of chaos. And that chaos is going to open up, I do believe, an opportunity for us to see ourselves as spiritual beings having a spiritual experience in the human condition. That's what we really are. We're not human beings looking for a spiritual direction. We are spiritual beings having an experience. And we can either enjoy the experience or we can fight the experience. That's up to us. So thank you for being here this morning. And what I'd like to do is just uh, close this with a very short prayer. So Spirit, we give thanks that we can align ourselves with the laws that create a universe of perfection, that create a universe of love, that create a universe of wisdom, that create a universe that works together in harmony, that is the glue to us working together, to seeing each other as the good. So seeing each other through the eyes of love. And as we do that, we affirm that we will grow in such a direction that we will want to share our time, we want to share our talent, 
We want to share our treasure. And so it is. Amen. Now, let me see. Unorthodox service. Let me find out where we're supposed to be. Okay? Okay, yes, we have this opportunity, speaking of giving, of to giving. And um, anybody who's a guest does not have to feel that they